welcome. You are here with Dr. Nilda Perez with Business Foresight, creating strategies towards your extraordinary future. Good morning. Hello and bienvenidos back to uh, Dr. Nilda Perez, Dr. Nilda Radio. Um, I've been away for two weeks in San Antonio and I've missed you. I've missed you so much, Kate. <laughs> it's 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 uh it's been a long uh long two weeks actually, um and I was you know away I was in uh in San Antonio in training and I had two speaking engagements but I am happy to be back home and I'm definitely happy to be back in the studio, trying to do this from a distance was a lot harder than I thought, <laughs> so um that see Katie I need you I need you you needed to come with me next time that's it I'm oh, packing you invite. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say we're not doing this without you ever again. That was that was my mistake. I like the sound of that. Uh, so um, yeah. So anyway, I'm so happy to be back. So um, so last week I came in from San Antonio and um, I did the show from San Antonio. I was I was interviewing Rachel and that was that was really fun. Um, it was I had this lovely house and uh, we kind of we were all over the place trying to you know we did a, a you know the interview from there. So Rachel was from Arcs um, Digital Design. She is my marketer and she's a digital marketer, um, and, and she was awesome. So um, la semana pasada estaba yo en San Antonio, Texas, con Raquel Calderón. Um, so today we're going to continue with strategic positioning, and um, we have a, an amazing guest. Her name is uh, Susana. Bauman, hola, saludos. <laughs> oh, we don't hear her at all, do we? Is she talking? Yes, she is. And we have it. Are yeah. you plugged in over there? I am plugged in. Yeah, technical difficulties. No, no. we don't. We don't hear her at all. Well, this is on over here, so it's got to be your laptop. Okay. So, um, okay. Try speaking again, Susana. Say hello. Como están? You hear her now? I Perfect. hear her now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is this. But we're, we're going to get through this. You know, there's one thing we've learned is to roll with the punches. Yes. Right, Katie? Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. You know, somehow, somehow things work them, them, their, themselves out. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, again, we're going to be talking today uh, a little bit more about strategic positioning. Um, uh, Susana is a she's a media strategist, and we're going definitely to pick and in, pick into her brain, and uh, we want to hear what she has to say. Um, yes, yes. So, and I, um, you know, I'm always passionate about helping you, um, you know, grow your business. El desarrollo de y expandecer su negocio para mí es una pasión. Um, so expanding your business, uh, so when, we want to hear what you have to say, we want to listen in and what you have to say, and we want to be able to have you participate. So this is not a conversation between two people. We want as many of you to be involved as possible because at the end of the day, this is for everyone, you know, so we want to hear what you have to say. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is that we're going we're gonna to do this worksheet thing again, and I think we finally got it down pat, Katie. Yes. So, um, so I want everyone to download their worksheet, and the worksheet is going to be, um, you got to go to HHTP, or you can just go straight to drnildaperez.com forward slash worksheet. It's in a word format, so if you wanted to type in it in, you know, from your phone or whatever, it, it's available. So, um, this way we, um, the, and the, the idea is, you know, with, with this, that every week we offer this, this worksheet. So that you can follow with us on the topics, you can actually be taking notes, the training, the conversations are designed so that you can make discoveries and apply insights and uh, be able to become a better business, a better business professional. And, you know, again, it's, it's here for you to have an extraordinary, you know, extraordinary success. So today we're going to talk about, um, I, I want to give you a quote by Tito Phillips. He says that building credibility comes before profitability. Um, building credibility comes before profitability. <laughs> it's tricky. It's tricky, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, building credibility comes before profitability. Um, so, when you want to stand out, you, um, you have to uh, establish yourself for credibility. 
So there were three things that you need in order to be able to be credible, right? Because everybody wants to buy from you. Everybody wants to follow you if they find, you know, you, that you're a credible person. So the three things is you want, the first thing is you want to create credibility. How do you do this? Through communication and engagement. You want to be able to um, communicate with the people that are following you, with the people that are buying from you, with your potential clients and your current clients. You also want to be able to, re to de establish respect. And this is earned through action. What are the things that you're doing? One of the things that I talk about a lot, and I learned this from my professor, um, Dr. Winston, and that was agapao love. Mm -hmm. Agapao love. Okay. Um, we've heard of agape love, which is awesome, but but agapao love is actually doing the right thing for the right reason for mm -hmm. your employees. Oh, and, like and when you do this, what happens is that you are establishing respect. People know that they can trust you, mm -hmm. and that's always critical. Um, you want to build trust through, also you want to build trust through ethical practices. I'm um, treating your employees um, as well as your customers equal, like your, your customers are not more important than your employees. Okay. Um, and that, that goes in anything, whether that be a ministry, whatever you're doing, the people that you're serving are not more important than the people that are actually doing the service. Very nice. Okay. So that, those are the three, those are three critical things. So, um, so what are some things that you want to be able to, or what are the things that you want to share is your knowledge? So I'm going to go back a little bit and I'm going to try to do this now in Spanish. Okay. So tres cosas que le ayudan a establecer esa cre credibilidad es um, buena comunicación. Esto es también um, establece es establecer uh, el respeto mm -hmm. y finalmente generar confianza. Son tres cosas que son muy importante cuando uno quiere establecer este, la credibilidad. So what are some things that you can do to share your knowledge? See, because the thing is that um, knowledge really establishes you as, as the, the, the person that when you have that knowledge, when you share that knowledge, that's what people want to know. They want to know that you, um, that you know what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever you're going to buy something or, mm -hmm. or even, even in service, like even uh, in, in ministry that you do, whatever it is that we do, people want to be, they want to trust that we know what we're doing. Right. They want to make sure it's not just somebody standing up there saying, I got this. All right. Exactly. Would you agree, uh, Susana? Absolutely. Yes. I was uh, listening very carefully and uh, trying to follow all your recommendations. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, so what do you do? You have to be able to teach. How do you teach? You teach through speaking, you teach through, um, example. through example, you, th you teach through um, publishing articles, you teach through sending out newsletters, you know, this is all you're educating the, mm -hmm. the people that are following you. You're educating whether that be kids or adults or business people, yeah. professionals. So you're teaching them. Um, besides that, you're informing them. And there is a difference between teaching and informing. So when you inform, you're, you're giving them information that, is, that they can use, those, those practical things that they can use. Okay. So these things are you can do through blogging. So now you're giving them information. Um, five steps. You know that there's a lot of how-tos and a lot of five steps. I love those. And why? Because they're actually giving me tools. And, and that's an awesome thing to be able. So that's, that's informing. You want to be able to create trainings and educational videos where you're actually mm -hmm. giving them information that they can use, that they can apply, mm -hmm. you know, ready for you or, you know, right. information. And you want to develop, you know, um, videos. There's videos and the audio trainings. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing mm -hmm. is establishing that credibility. And I'm doing that through giving information every week. And not only do I do that, I bring awesome guests like Susana, like um, I have so many people that I've had here. Jorge was here. Cesar Perez was here. Um, oh, Raymond Collazo. Remember, that was the first person. That was an awesome interview. And these people are, these are credible people that are bringing information. That, and I'm not only giving them a training and showing them, but I actually show them what this looks like in real life. Right. 
it's application. And application is the best way for anybody to learn. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is entertain, believe it or not. You know, people, I I like this one, one did, absolutely. And um, you do that through presentations and making the presentations fun. One of the things that I, I, I love about what I'm doing is because it's interactive. Um, I, you're, I, I lo- noticed that you're learning things and I, and I get people sending me, you know, emails and questions and I welcome that because it's interactive. I'm not sitting here. I, one of the things I hated in college with the, the lectures, I can't stand having somebody talk at me because I, I really, it wasn't right. learning anything. You want to do something. Right. And you want to be able to apply it. I want it to be interactive. I love when they ask a question because you know what? That keeps me, that keeps me alert. Right. Right, Exactly. So, so these are the things, these are, these are the small things that are the big things. So, um, sorry about that. I need to to bring this down because clearly, um, all these people asking me questions and this is awesome. This is great. So we can't hear what the lady is saying on the phone is what I'm getting. So, yeah. Um, is your connection weak? I am not sure. Uh, Katie. (laughs) <laughs> I would leave this morning come over and check, so then we might not have to Okay, so I am going to pass this over to you when you tell me. Just be it? careful. Right. Okay. So how can we do this? Um, okay, so I'm going to continue with with, uh, with the training, and I want to talk now about workshops. Workshops is another way that um, that we can you know, again, have that, it's, it's, what do we call it? We call it entertaining because you're, you're teaching while you're, you're being fun. It's fun. It's, it's, it's learning. People are learning things. Um, videos that are fun and engaging contests, contests are phenomenal. People love contests, um, podcasts, audio, TV interviews, all these things are fun. And all of these things are applicable, you know, to be able to, to teach something and to be able to, um, be able to give people things that are going to be practical. The next thing I want to talk about is conditioning yourself to teach, educate, and, and inform. Oftentimes, and, and I, this is one thing I get a lot, a lot, a lot, and this is very notorious in, in social media where they're, they're wanting you to buy, so here, I have just a solution for you when they don't even know if I have a problem. And that is horrible. That is just, it's, it's just horrible. It's, it's not, uh, it, are we good now? I believe so. Okay, so where? The, the connection could be kind of a problem. Well, just keep swimming and uh, push comes to shove. This is going to be, we're going to have a video yeah, out of this. Have and, phone, so in that way. Okay, so uh, would that interfere? Having her on the phone in on this? I would take her off of that. Okay, no, I can't do that because this is the video that, this is the only way that I can actually communicate with her and have people see her. Well, not but, if, you, if she calls in on the radio station. Okay, so we will have a call in on the radio station line when she comes, which is going to be in a few minutes. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Okay. So um, you want to condition yourself to teach in form. You should always be able to ha- have a teaching mode. One of the things that I do is, I, and I love this because uh, when people ask me a question, I really try to answer the question. And I usually answer the question, but, but no, here's the thing, but with examples. Okay. See, you can answer the question and totally lose somebody. Mm-hmm. But when you're actually showing them um, applicable uh, information, it's much easier for them to get it. It's, right, because then it makes their right. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. So, um, so for your clients, you all, they're more inclined to buy from you when you inform them than when you try to sell them. Definitely. You know, um, you know the benefit. You have to always show them the benefits. What are the benefits of whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is right. that you're selling? Why it matters to them? Why it matters to them? Right. Why do they want this? Mm-hmm. What is this going to do for them? So, um, you're more inclined to want that that of whatever that that may be so i'm going to go back and i'm going to do this in spanish um for my spanish audience um okay so fantastic you're fantastic this back and forth is back and forth but but uh amazing i have katie like katie's awesome like katie is totally involved and she's (laughs) yeah she's she's yeah she's learning spanish i am learning spanish (laughs) that's great great for the audience 
great for you all around. That's great. Okay. So, okay. So, um, ¿qué, ¿qué puedes hacer para um, compartir con conocimientos? Tienes que compartir conocimientos. ¿Cómo se hace eso? Hace eso con pláticas. Speaking. Que hace eso con um, publicar artículos. Porque artículos, eh, una persona puede ver un artículo, no conocerte, pero de momento le estás dando una información que es totalmente innecesaria para ellos. Um, ¿Quieres mandar um, boletines de noticias? Es, la, los boletines de noticias son pero pequeñas ideas que uno le da, que le está enseñando al, al, al cliente o al pot, el potencial cliente. Okay. Um, quiere informar también con blogs. Blogs es muy importante porque ahí tú le estás dando información. ¿Quieres, quieres generar entrenamientos y videos educativos? Tú quieres educar a tu cliente y no quieres venderle a tu cliente porque siempre tiene que ser algo que lo va a ayudar a ellos este, con audios y videos. Y también tienes que entretener. Yo sé que muy, mayormente las personas nunca piensan en entretenimiento, pero la verdad que de caso es que en entretener, este, entretener el, el cliente es muy importante. Um, ¿Cómo haces esto? Con presentaciones, pero no, una, no son lecturas, son presentaciones que son inter, acte, interactivas. Ok, muy importante. Tiene que ser interactivas. Um, también talleres uh, que son interactivos. A mí me encantan los talleres porque con los talleres yo le doy, siempre le doy, uh, uh, como hago aquí, que le doy, uh, uh, what do they call it? The, the, the forms. So I give them the forms, the, the, sheet, the worksheets. Ok. Um, también uh, otro con, con um, videos que son, que, que son los, solamente que entretienen los videos más, ¿verdad? Los lo, lo que van vir, viral siempre son lo que son, que, que, que tú no gozas cuando lo ves, porque es, vamos a decir, un, un tema que sea, you look for the fun in it. tú buscas la manera de, de dar tu información, quiero que no sea tan rígida. Claro, claro. Tan rígida, ¿verdad? Como tú no tienes que ser entretenible. Entretenida, claro. Entretenida, ok. So, um, también esto, este, cuando tus clientes conocen los beneficios de tus productos o tus servicios, ellos están mucho más inclinados a desear su producto y su servicio, o su servicio. So, eso es muy importante. So, knowing this means that you always want to educate, you always want to be, siempre quiere estar al tanto Um, y la mentalidad tiene que ser siempre en educar sus clientes. Entre más tú los eduques, entre más información tú le des, más tú vas a tener ese cliente como atado a ti y atado a tu producto, tu servicio. So we're going to have a little break now and we're going to have a commercial and we will be right back. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, th this is a great uh, training Dr. Nilda Perez is giving right now, and I'll be uh, in, in the interview in a few minutes. So hang in there if you want to uh, see our interaction. It's going to be great because she's very, very knowledgeable, and uh, I think she's going to do a great job. Um, uh, okay, so Ken uh, is one of my um, you know, leaders when I, it comes to uh, business travel. So thank you very much for being here. Eight, four, five. Because you still see her, correct? Yeah. Oh, this number, yeah, eight, four, five. Okay, so. Four, eight, five. Thirteen. Thirteen. Nine. Huh? Six seconds. We're back. Three. Now she's back, and uh, we're gonna continue. Okay, and we're back. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, like I said, this this is um that we're having uh difficulty hearing Susana. Um, I'm gonna continue with my training, and in the meantime, Susana, if you can call in, stay on, but at the same time, call in. 2845 485 1390. 485 I mean 
Um, you want to be able to present case studies. Okay. Case studies are always important because case studies are showing people the reality of, of what it looks like. What does what you're selling, your product or service, what does it actually do? We're so, having some difficulties. They, they are having some difficulties in, in the mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Of course, now we hear Okay. All right. Now we hear it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we hear you. Okay. So I'm going to. You do? You do? Okay, Are we you, do. Can you? Okay, so okay. Susanna, I'm gonna turn turn you down over here. Okay, so we're not gonna hear you until you come on live for your interview. Okay. Okay, which will be okay. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm also trying to tell the people on Facebook that what's happening. Okay. okay. Perfect. So Perfect. everybody will be in the know. Okay. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> okay. So um, so when you present case studies, this is the way. This is the way to present a good case study. You present a problem, okay. you present a solution, mm -hmm. and then you give them the results. Makes sense. Very simple. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be wordy. This was the problem. This is how we solved it. These are the results. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you always want to be ahead. You always want to have that information because you want to be able to have that. You know, When you give a case study, it doesn't have to be long-winded. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to give a lot more information. They can be short, straight, and to the point. Um, you want to be, always be able to present those results. People love stories. What do they say? Information tells, but stories sell. Okay, I like that. Stories always Yes. So yes. that's what you do with a case study. <laughs> yes. Um, Yahoo Finance had, that, and I, I, I love quotes, and I pulled this quote that I thought was awesome. I can't remember. I know Katie knows that I've about never heard me. This before. Katie knows this about me. Okay, so there's a, a rapid revolution in people's preferences and expectations. They're demanding more authenticity, sustainability, and meaningful value. And that's what you do. You're giving people value when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, so you want to always be able to give them stuff that is going to help them, that's going to, um, they're going to be able to apply there, there is such a fear with people giving information away because they're like, well, I sell that and I sell this product and I don't want somebody else to copy it or I don't want. And the reality is that this is what sells people on you, that authenticity, that, that something that's going to be meaningful and valuable to them. Um, with, that, um, with that said, we're going to now go into the segment with Susana. Now, Susana, can you um, say hello? Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, I, we can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, Thank you. so let me give let me give you Susana's uh uh because Susana Bauman is, is really the quintessential uh person which is just uh she's the well Susana Bauman is the director of LCSW Worldwide, a boutique of multicultural marketing. She's consulting. Uh, it's a consulting firm that um, that currently is located in New Jersey. Um, she's the the editor in chief of a new company, uh, which is a new initiative called LatinasBusiness.us. Mm -hmm. She has a, this, I have to read this whole repertoire, but I have to tell you, it's really interesting to, to hear all of this. So she's a multicultural expert, and she's award winning business writer, a public speaker, and a published author. Um, she migrated from Argentina in 1990 to the United States, and uh, in her country, she was, tenu she was a tenured professor in agriculture and fine arts at the National University of Rosario, Argentina. Um, in the United States, she obtained her Master's of Arts in Liberal Studies, and uh, taking advantage of her polished bilingualism, um, ling uh, la language skills, she um, pursued a career in communications, publishing, and marketing, which is exactly what she's using now. Mm -hmm. So she's a writer, she's an editor, she's a publisher, and she's worn almost every hat in media, which is awesome. She has managed um, publishing and production crews. In 2002, Susana launched her first bilingual newspaper in New Jersey called El Periódico Latino. And um, she's featuring news and stories to promote the achievements of Latinos in the Garden, in the Garden State of Jersey. So then in, in 2014, she launched latinasinbusiness.us, which is an online platform dedicated to the economic empowerment of Latina working women. 
this platform, this platform, she's received the attention and the support of Latina leaders around the country, including um, United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which is huge, um, the um, American Alliance, the National Latina Business Women Association. And for this initiative, she's received the Latina Excellence Award. Oh, congratulations. Yes. So um, in 2015, um, Lista Summit of, of the Telca, T-E-C-L-A Award for Business Blog in Hispanitized in 2015, which is an awesome, awesome, if you've never been to Hispanitized, Oh my goodness, you have to go. And she was invited to become a media strategic member of the NAA, the American Linea Leadership Caucus. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Bienvenida. Bienvenida. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Anilda. I just wanted to let you know that the um, there is a mutual admiration here. I wanted to show you our poster right there and you're right at the top uh will be oh, left for you so. and you've always been a part of my leaders the my my environment of leader uh, latina leaders and that that awesome time. yes okay so now hold on one second i am going to just make sure that they can see you on facebook okay okay so let's okay. let's let me take one quick second and oh dear this is this is awesome. We are connected uh, miles and miles away. Uh, Nilda has done a great job in trying to accommodate me uh, for this interview, and we are we are broadcasting simultaneously uh, thanks to technology. I adore technology. The technology is a, it's a great uh, way to communicate and do good things. This is the example of technology really doing great things. And, uh, um, okay. we are so excited that we were able to, um, to get back uh, really put this yeah, together I um, at, at such a distance. I mean, it would have taken me three hours, uh, driving, uh, each way to meet uh, Nilda, and she was so gracious to accommodate me and go into all this trouble just to to have the interview this morning. Well, so. I've only heard from you a little bit, but it sounds like the trouble was definitely worth it. I mean, I'm enjoying hearing from you and your insights and everything you have to offer. Thank you, thank you very much, Katie. Yeah. You are very welcome. Okay, let's. We're going to go back live. I know that is currently trying to get us back on Facebook Live. I wish I had a video camera so I could show you all the beautiful faces she's making. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not beautiful at all. <laughs> I'm hoping we get a new quote out of it. So yeah, let's see. I, know. I can commentate as if we were at a football game, and that makes everybody feel like they're here in the studio right now. You know, she's currently smiling. She's pushing a whole bunch of buttons. Oh, there you go. A little slow. We're getting faster. Oh, she's leaving. Go live. Oh, she said go live, folks. This could mean that we are going live right now. Oh, very good. Oh. Very good. Here we go. Okay. Okay. There's okay. a little movement. And she's actually moving the whole thing right now. Oh. Wow. Okay. Can you see what's going on, Susanna? Can you see? I see that the frame is moving from Anilda's to me. Okay. One okay. okay. Or the we other. are doing our very best. No, but it's coming back to the desk. Right I now. am I back. So I and folks in, of course, I have back in the, in the back in the picture. <laughs> this back this, in the picture. And we're back. Okay. So, um, okay. So, Susanna, I have a bunch of questions for you, and I, I can't wait to start. So, here we go. Okay. Um, what is Latinas in Business US? Because it's my work of love. Really. <laughs> and I love it, and I love it, and yeah. I love it. And um, I have my article almost done. Oh, ahead. thank you. I, I really would so much look forward to you becoming a contributor. I think you're going to, you, you have so many, so much to, uh, to teach and, and, and share. Uh, Latinas in Business at US was born out of my uh, need to help and you know uh, share the the ex experience uh, of a Latina business owner. I'm an immigrant, and uh, uh, I started my business over 20 years ago with a lot of difficulties, with a lot mm -hmm. of obstacles. Regardless that I had perfect English because I was very uh, proficient in English, um, and uh, and I was an educated person. 
and still mm -hmm. it was very very difficult mm -hmm. so i wanted to share these experiences with the younger latinas uh with the ones that are getting out of the corporate world and trying to start their own businesses and see if they can you know smooth out a little bit their their path into entrepreneurship okay awesome so um what's your main activity at the lcs worldwide well lcs worldwide um was uh, talking about reinventing a business uh okay. when you are a business uh entrepreneur i, I make a difference between a small business owner and an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is a person who has is always looking for a vision. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's cutting edge. It's always waiting to, right. to and not, not change for the sake of change, but say uh, change for the sake of improvement and, right. and be able to de to develop better products, better services. Absolutely. And, and sometimes survive. And sometimes survive. <laughs> Okay. Because when you see it coming, when you mention Periodico Latino, and this is interesting because the two initiatives, um, I learned so much from one in, to be able to apply into the other one. Uh, Periodico Latino was in print right. and we distributed for free to homes. Okay. Uh, 16,000 circulation. Wow. And it was at the time where internet platforms and publications were starting to show up right and we lost in that curve okay so we didn't adapt we were not i was not quick enough to adapt to at that point into going digital okay so sometimes that's what happens you know as right. an entrepreneur you you try to see what's coming Mm -hmm. and try to reinvent your business. So we start, I started LCS Worldwide as a small translation uh, business, a side business. And then I saw need for staff development training in certain industries. So we developed that. And then we developed into the business, the media. You know, we okay. wanted a little bit, a little paper that will help our uh, business and it became really, you know, a, a very nice 32 page, um, you know, a newspaper. Okay. And then digital came and uh, we had to transform ourselves into, um, and at that time, both sides of the business were really growing, but the other side grew more. Okay. So we went into more uh, the, the training, strategic planning, uh, and, um, you know, outreach yeah. for uh, nonprofit and uh, government agencies. Okay. For our Latino, um, uh, for our Latino uh, audience, I want you to be able to say all of this in Spanish. Um, <laughs> and, and I want to, the, the question that I want to ask you is because um, una de las cosas que dijiste fue que cuando vino la tecnología, el, el, el periódico que tenías, que era todo en, en ¿cómo es? En, en print, que no era... Papel, en papel. Era papel. Esto, ah. de momento ya cambió eso. Y lo que yo me he dado cuenta es que el latino es bien tecnológico y le encanta la tecnología. Sí. And, y siempre están al tanto de la tecnología. Sí. So dime, vamos a, te voy a hacer la pregunta ahora, ¿qué es tu, tu actividad? Y dime el proceso de cómo llegaste a donde estás ahora. Claro. Entonces, lo que yo eh, decía era que eh, en, cuando uno es un, un, eh, un empresario, un emprendedor, uh -huh. tiene siempre que mirar esa visión de lo que viene. A veces para mejorar y, y emprender uh, um, o expandir su negocio y a veces para sobrevivir, como me pasó a mí. Okay. Que en el, eh, yo empecé como una pequeña compañía de traducciones, eh, estaba trabajando full time para el estado de New Jersey okay. y eh, hacía estas traducciones eh, y aún antes de trabajar para el estado de New Jersey, I'm sorry, eh, eh, porque empecé en el 96. Este, y hacíamos, tra hacía traducciones, on the, eh, digamos, eh, como part time. 
Y bueno, luego, eh, cuando llegó el momento apropiado, eh, hice eh, de eso una actividad eh, full time, eh, por de tiempo completo, empecé uh -huh. mi negocio, y, este, y bueno, fuimos evolucionando al ver las necesidades que, se, que nos iban llegando, gente que pedía cursos de español, por ejemplo, nosotros desarrollamos cursos de español para industrias específicas. ¿Eh? Ah, para industrias específicas, por ejemplo, en el área de bibliotecas. Nosotros tenemos una gran cantidad, y fue una línea de trabajo grande, en el área de bibliotecas, y te quería mostrar mi orgullo, que es Ay, mi mira, libro. ¡Ay, mira qué bonito! Oh, <ríe> mi libro, Hola, Hola amigos, amigos. Platform Latino Outreach, que es el libro específico que nosotros que publiqué para la industria de bibliotecas. ¿Eh? Okay. Entonces teníamos en salud, en educación y en bibliotecas, trabajábamos nosotros con estos cursos de español. Y bueno, empezamos, entonces luego me entusiasmé con el periódico. E hicimos también el periódico, trabajando con mi hijo en esa época, que era un estudiante ah. de diseño gráfico en la Universidad de Rutgers. Perfecto, la... la, la... Como el, el matrimonio perfecto. El matrimonio perfecto. El matrimonio perfecto, pero el matrimonio perfecto no. porque, pero bueno, digo yo, este, impresiona, eh, como es en uh, business wise, right? En, claro. En, the perfect sí. marriage in terms of entrepreneurship. You, he had the graphics and you had sí. the, the, the written word, so that's perfect. Y la, y la creatividad. Y la sí. creatividad, exacto. Pero, como dije, eh, entonces vino la época de la tecnología, donde muchos, eh, pu muchas publicaciones saltaron a la tecnología y yo, nosotros, yo no me di, no me animé a hacer el salto. Y bueno, y tuvimos que cerrar eh, en el año 2005, creo que fue, este, tuvimos que cerrar. Okay. Eh, eh, el, era muy costoso el, eh, la, la evolución, eh, de, del periódico eh, que repartíamos gratuitamente a domicilio a 16.000 eh, personas en, okay. en New Jersey. Ok. Y eso es mayormente esto, uh, Susana, lo que yo enseño. Yo le enseño al, 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 al empresario a ver, a, a, you know, I want them to see um, what are the trends, what for, and I, and yeah. I always ask them to prepare their business for, for the future. Because claro. you know what? The future can be tomorrow. People don't realize, ah, the future is, but not claro. anymore. With technology, you know, you can have a great thing that can go out of business in the next six months, in the next year. Claro. So I always ask them, I, I, that's one of the main things that, that foresight uh, strategies are, to be able claro. to look at trends, to be able to look at, you know, to be innovative. And, you know, these are all buzzwords, but nobody actually teaches you how to do it. And that's where my specialty comes in. That's mm -hmm. what I do best. I, I love teaching innovative and, and, the, and you know, these are the things that to me are, are critical. Claro, claro. Mm -hmm. Mirar hacia, uh, to look at what is coming and that, that is what yeah, la innovación. marketing, you know, analysis that people yes. pay attention to. You Exacto. Know, and it's so, so important. Mirar eh, las circunstancias, eh, desde los cambios políticos que te ocurren, uh -huh. hasta los desastres naturales. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tener uh -huh. todo una, una posibilidad de, 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 de respuesta hacia todas claro. estas este, Exacto. que ocurren en tu vida. Exacto. Social, tecnológico, ambiente, esto, eh, la economía y la política. Exacto. Todo eso, y, y todas, todas, estas, todas estas cosas tienen un gran impacto en un negocio. Exacto. Y mayor, la gente no mira, they don't look at that, that, you know, that, that steep, the social, the technological, the environmental, the, uh, the economy, and the, the politics. They're, they're, not, they're not separate. Right. And that, that's one of the things I try to bring home so often. They're not separate. They are truly one and the same. And, and it's important for you to know that because your business, you can be out of business, not, not intentional, but you can be out of business in no time if you're not aware, you know? There are, there are certain industries that are more vulnerable than others too, depending yeah. you know, on, on what you're looking for. 
and uh, but not because you have been established for a long time. It means that you don't go bust in, no, 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 in, in, no, any, no. in any minute. The yellow pages, the yellow pages, is a classic right. case yeah. Yeah. that yeah. they thought that they had no. When no, when when internet came and when they uh, what right. is it the right. uh, the, right. the search engines ah, that that has nothing to do with us and they had they had it monopolized nationwide yeah. and little did they know that they'd be out of business like and that was wasn't that crazy yeah. they weren't looking and that's what i you know that's what i tell people so you yeah. know just because you've been established just because you've been doing something a long time does is not an indicator that's right. of stability that's or sustainability right right exactly yeah. well not anymore like I, I think at one time i'll tell you even 15 20 years ago that was true but it's not true anymore. Right, you can't say that. It's like, well, it's, it's always, it's always been this way, so we'll be fine. Right. So you have to, you're saying, look at all the other factors. And, you know. Right, right. So, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I have a, a, a lot of other questions. And so we're going to, I want to be able to get them all before before we're done. Um, what has your experience been as a Latina business owner? You, you came to this country, the Argentina. You were established in Argentina, came to the United States. ¿Qué fue el, lo, la experiencia que tuviste como empresaria latina? Bueno, um, ¿en inglés o en español? Both. <laughs> Both. Um, um, I came, uh, first I, when I came, I was looking for a job, um, you know, in teaching. I was a college professor back in Argentina, so I, you know, I went back to school got a, an, another master's degree here because I thought that education was going to be the path for a better future for me and for my family. Right. And, uh, and then I was looking for jobs. I tried to look for jobs. Okay. Uh, but while I was, uh, and I, I, I had a job, um, I had several jobs, but mostly the, the most important one that I learned from all what I do now was in New York uh, at a, um, a company that were doing multicultural marketing. And I found that fascinating. I've learned more about Latin America since I came to the United States than in really? Argentina. Oh, yes. fascinating. It, it fascinating. is because in Argentina, you are Argentinian. <laughs> that everybody is the same, right? It's the same. Okay. Right. So when you come to a country where you are grouped in a in a bunch of pe- with a bunch of people that are we we have certain similarities, but mm-hmm. we are also very different in right. so many ways. Mm-hmm. And then you start learning, and the learning process is quick because you have that connection, you know. It, and I love that. I, I love that connection that we have, that we quickly can, come, you know, start talking about our lives and we can talk about our, you know, whatever, you know, things that, 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 that we love to do. But also um, something was saying, yes, this morning, um, an expression on Facebook uh, that is called si el gas pila. I never heard that expression in my life before. I don't have, I don't know what it means. <laughs> okay. 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 So okay. learning, that learning process was fascinating. Right. And while I was doing this, um, you know, these jobs, I thought to myself, look, if I can do this for someone else and, 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 and what happened to me, I could see that my jobs were dead end jobs. Okay. Um, well, I was working in Trenton. They had to create a special uh, category, you know, for the job that I was doing because there was, I had, I there was no established category to do what I was doing. Right. So it, I was, I was there. I was never going to co- climb any ladder whatsoever. Okay. Okay. So I said, why don't I do this for myself? And then I become my own CEO. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love right. it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the idea of the business. I've been, I always, I try to keep myself busy and of travel. It's just my, 
it's my personality. I'm not a couch potato. Right. And I have, to, I have to be Absolutely. doing things all the time. Watching TV is not an option. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I love movies and I love, yeah, but, mm-hmm. but, um, mm-hmm. but I need to be, you know, involved. I need right. to be engaged. Right. I love to work for the community. And I, I love, love a challenge. I love a challenge as much as I, I have to tell you yeah. through the challenge, I'm like, this is impossible. This is crazy. Why am I doing this? But, but that's why you're doing it. But that's what I'm doing it, right? And then if there's no challenge, I'm like, okay, this is boring. Yeah. And then on to the next thing, on to the next challenge. And not necessarily the next thing, but what is going to challenge me, you know? Yeah. So, um, okay, so let's... Let me tell you something else. Um, mm-hmm. Nelly, um, Nilda? Nilda. Uh-huh. Um, what I recognized when I came to this country and I started meeting so many people, new people in my life. I, I, I lost my identity. I had to recreate my own identity in this country, right? As an immigrant. Right. And I, I felt like a responsibility that I had to be the voice in my own little humble way of the people who could not speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And there is so many, so many immigrants in this country, not only Latinos from, you know, from all over the world, that they come looking for better opportunities for their families, for their children to improve, to become better at what they do and better citizens. Mm -hmm. And they have little opportunity to speak and, and a little opportunity to be represented. And I wanted to to do my part i wanted to do my part in all that and that that's just been you know my 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 guide you know through the, all these years in business mm-hmm. okay so i want to go over this in spanish and i have some questions that i'm being asked so um yeah this is awesome but i want you to just go over that in spanish okay. um okay. Yo quería, la, la pregunta fue que ha sido su experiencia como latina um como la, la empresaria latina. Y la pregunta que me hicieron va más o menos con esto, ¿cómo su experiencia como un inmigrante le ha impactado a, a su, a, en los Estados Unidos? Um, ¿Cómo ha sido, cómo ha sido la, el, vamos a decir, el tránsito, the, the transition, claro. de una parte a la otra? Perfecto, perfecto. Uh-huh. Eh, bueno, eh, mi, mi experiencia... Eh, Fue muy difícil al principio, como dije, a pesar de que mi, ex, mi inglés era excelente, porque yo um, asistí a una escuela americana en Argentina y tenía inglés, eh, muy buen dominio del inglés. Uh-huh. Y era una persona educada, con una educación universitaria, uh-huh. y sin embargo fue muy difícil la adaptación. Muy difícil eh, desde... Ir a, a, a un supermercado a comprar y ver esa variedad y la cantidad de cosas hasta entender cómo ayudarle a mi hija a aplicar para la universidad. Eh, okay. eh, era todo completamente distinto. Okay. Para mí, una de las grandes experiencias de haber sido inmigrante en este país es haber aprendido tanto de la cultura latinoamericana y de todos los países latinoamericanos. Sí. Lo encuentro fascinante y somos una cultura extraordinaria, dinámica, maravillosa, alegre, positiva. Tenemos, tenemos este, eh, un, un positivismo que es un poquito a veces fuera de... Sí, sí. <risa> demasiado. Sí, sí. Pero para para nosotros no lo es, pero... De verdad, siempre para adelante. Sí. Y, este, y bueno, y, y, y empecé mi, mi, mi empresa, mi emprendimiento, como una, porque pensé que, que, que siempre tenía estos trabajos de, que no, donde no podía progresar, uh-huh. ¿eh? donde no tenía posibilidades de progresar, porque me ponían en una cajita. Y como sí. yo era inmigrante latina, tenía que hacer trabajos relacionados con eso y nada más. Y nada más. Claro. Entonces sí. dije, bueno, es hora de ser mi propio presidente de mi empresa. Y, y, así, y así fue. Ok. 
Ok. Um, otra pregunta que yo tengo, porque uh, para mí... Ok. Perfect. Ok, so we're going to have a few, uh, a quick commercial here. And... Ok. Don't go, don't move. <laughs> no, no, no. Aquí estamos, aquí estamos. Ok. <laughs> No sé si estamos grabando el Facebook, pero eh, espero que, porque no veo que nadie responde, pero bueno, a un poquito se vio, creo. <risa> And we're back. So if you have any questions, please call 845-485-1390 with questions or comments. Um, again, si tiene, um, si tiene preguntas o comentarios, si me hace el favor y nos llama al 845-485-1390. Y queremos darle la bienvenida otra vez a Dr. Neil Perez Show en Juan 95.7 y La Super Latina which I forgot to say earlier. So, estamos en Juan 95.7 y La Super Latina. Um, this show will be encored in La Super Latina on Wednesdays from 4 to 5. I will be sending you all that information because I think it's important that you see that if you don't catch it today, you will definitely get it uh, during the week, okay? Yeah. So, okay, so me, me, me pregunta is because, uh, you know, for me, the future is very important. I'm, I'm very future oriented and foresight strategies are important. So where do you see, um, as a media person, where do you see the future of media in business for Latinos? Like where do you, where do you think that Latinos should be positioning themselves in terms of media? And, and we're going to talk all about this new uh, project that you have coming up November 29th, but I want you to tell me, I want to pick your brain about this. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. ¿Me escuchas? Do you sí, hear me? escucho. Yes. Ah, okay, good. Yeah. Do you hear me? Because, sí. No, because I didn't see the frames. Oh, yeah, no, we, yeah, te escucho. Eh, te, um, so, um, I think it's important um, that the future, um, I started Latinas in Business because I wanted to promote a positive image about our Latino talent. That's the, the most important, uh, you know, in, in counterpart to the, all the negativity that we have lived these few, you know, months before the election. And it's just so um, appalling, I would say, mm -hmm. because we, I, like I said, we are a hardworking, talented community that we contribute in, 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 in numerous Ways. Numerous ways, absolutely. Numerous, numerous ways, thank you. Right. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. yes. <laughs> no, no, you, you did fine. Yeah. Yeah. And, you can and, help me with the Spanish, so we're good. <laughs> right, and it really upsets me. So I want to bring this, and I love when you were doing the training because you said um, uh, stories sell. And that's what we need to do. We need to sell ourselves. Uh, I have a, actually a training that I do is, is tell your story and influence others, right? right. It, that's how you have to learn to tell your story, your personal branding. It's so, so important. I never knew this. And I was, I didn't apply my own marketing, uh, you know, knowledge yeah. uh, to my own business. And when I did, my business went, you know, the other way. Yeah. And I expanded. I had clients in nine states. I, I, it really became, when I started to let them know who I was and what my story was. Right. Okay? right. So um, that's, that's one of the things. That, that's not how I see. I see we need to really uh, get out and speak up 
for our stories, for our okay. for our talented people, uh, okay. Latinos are. Okay. We we are a very very important part of this country uh, okay. population. Okay, um, I want you to translate this in Spanish, and I still have right. three other questions, so we're going to kind of go through the questions a little quicker now. Okay. So okay, um, quiero que el, el, el futuro de la media para Latino empresario, que, cómo tú crees que pueden, uh, you know, how do you think they can position themselves? Se pueden posicionar para el futuro con yeah. a través yeah. de la media. Claro. Mm -hmm. Eh, tenemos que contar las historias positivas, las historias de impacto, las historias de éxito. Nosotros tenemos gente muy capaz y muy talentosa y gente que contribuye permanentemente a la economía y al, al empresariado eh, eh, en los Estados Unidos. Entonces tenemos que contar esas historias, tenemos que salir a contar esas historias. Es muy, muy importante. Ok. Um, la, mi próxima esto pregunta es, what are the trends that you see in media? ¿Qué son las tendencias que tú ves en media, en la media? Porque la media ha cambiado con, con el internet y, y todo social. Sí. Eh, la media ha cambiado quite a bit. Before, sí. to have a, a radio show or to have a TV show, you had to, to I mean, luckily I'm, I'm blessed to be in a studio, but this is not the only way anymore. So. Yeah. Claro. What are the, the trends that you see for the future of media? Bueno, también me, uh, you also mentioned a little bit of that in your training. You know, you have to have a multiple uh, uh, way to communicate. Platforms. Platform, multiple channels, multiple platforms, multiple ways to communicate your story and what you do right. to your client. You have to provide value. Right. When in, in, it's not the car sales mentality anymore you know you sell you, you know you make your money you go away not anymore you have to bring value extra value because there is so much going on right now pero yo creo que además del del valor extra que hay que traer a a, a este a la información hay que distinguir entre media tradicional o mainstream media I, we have to distinguish uh -huh. y media alternativos como somos nosotras como eres tú y como soy uh -huh. yo Exacto. nosotros tenemos un propósito educacional tenemos un propósito de avanzar de ayudar a progresar a la comunidad ¿eh? entonces eh, este 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 para mí es el gran trend que, eh, que estamos desarrollando todos los pequeños influencers y, y connectors I like to call myself a connector I you know I like to make connections among people because I think that's what we need we need to be one yes. you know? so influencers leaders like you uh, people who are every day on the job doing this amazing, amazing connection of educating and helping and bringing people up. Okay, awesome. Well, Susana, I have a lot more questions and we're kind of running out of time, but I have to ask you this last question because to me, this is awesome. Um, there, there is something that you're doing that I think is excellent. So I want you to tell me some about some, a little bit about your major developments and what's happening in Latinas in Business US and um, this, this awesome program that you have, which by the way, I will be at. Yes, I yes. know. Thank yeah. you so much. It was very exciting yes. when you told me you were going to be there. Uh, November 29th, we are having our Latinas in Business uh, Annual Best Business Awards. And uh, we are featuring a Pitch Your Business competition. Love it. And we're going to put six powerful, brave Latina business owners. They're beautiful. They're young. They're amazing. They're going to be pitching their businesses in front of a panel of media experts. Okay. And I really wanted to thank all my sponsors. I don't know if I can name them to you because that's, uh, that's another story. But I yeah. want to thank all the sponsors. I had a great support from everybody. Yeah. They're going to be pitching, as I said. And, you know, we're going to do the little competition there. And they're going to get some price, amazing prizes. Um, uh, and and the opportunity to speak in front of uh, Lily Hill Valeta, who is the, she launched an initiative called Project American Dreams. 
And if they are allowed into her program, they're going to be awesome. into, uh, you know, their, 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 their amazing competition. Okay. So who can pitch? Can anybody pitch the people that come or is it just? No. Oh. We are already have the six competitors. We okay. Have the six that apply, and we only could take six this year. Hopefully, it will grow, and you know, it will be yeah. better next year. Okay. So this is the first the, the first event of this kind that you have. We had something similar last year, but it was on uh, Facebook only. Oh, okay. And this yeah. this media is what is this year is in person. They have to be yeah. there. Okay. I know, but this is going to be for radio, TV, what, what exactly, who are the, the yes, we have uh, Univision, we have a uh, social, <laughs> sorry. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Coming, yeah, we have social media vibes, um, uh, which is a, you know, marketing strategy in social media. Uh, we have New Jersey Bound Latino and we have Project American Dreams. Okay. So, and a lot, I invited a lot of media people like yourself and other people to come and, and watch this, these ladies. Okay. So if people want to go, because I think even if you're not one of the six, just to see the way that they pitch, right, is, right. is critical. And um, cheer. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, how do you know? So it's really important to be surrounded in this environment. I always say yes. these, yes. these are definitely networking events that are worth you know, investing into. So how do, how do they go? Where, where okay. do they go? We have the, uh, the event. It's featured on our Latinas in Business that US Facebook page. Okay? okay. And we also have the registration at Eventbrite in a Latinas in Business Best Business Awards. We just can do a search and they can go there to register. So that's Latinas in Business, business dot US. Dot US. Latinas in business punto US. Okay. Latinas in business dot punto US. Okay. Well, let, I'm, I'm so grateful and so excited to have you here. Um, we're definitely going to do in, uh, a, a, another, uh, we have to do a, a follow up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even Katie agrees. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We have to do a follow up, uh, and 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 because there's there's a lot. I still have like five questions that I have for you that we weren't able to get to. So, um, and there's questions that uh, that I'm getting on Facebook, but the time is is here, and we're we're pretty much at the end. Okay, so thank you so much, Susana. Thank, thank you, so you. thank you. I so much. You were so gracious in putting this together. I so much appreciate this. Yeah, this was. I'm gonna give you a big hug when I see you. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Wow. Yeah, we we. You know what? We we was we, we struggled. Um, and she's she's like three and a half hours away. She couldn't make it here, so we made it happen anyway. So you know, thankfully, you know, yeah, I have my awesome marketer, Rachel. Una diosa. Una diosa. Una diosa. She's Una awesome. Diosa. I, I was like, I have a problem. Cool. No, tú, tú eres una risa. Ay, gracias. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk a little bit really quickly about, um, this is the end of this segment, and I want to talk about our guest next week, which uh, Susana knows, Dr. Adaluz Gonzalez. Um, she came all the way from Delaware this weekend just for an interview, and she was fascinating. Um, she, she's, uh, she talks about communication in business. And um, she's also a well sought out speaker, a trainer, a coach, a consultant. Um, she has she's an author of just formative uh, conversations, and you just have to tune in next week. Another dynamic Latina who's doing like she's totally rocking it. Um, and uh, so, with that said, we're getting to the end of the show. I want I have a really great giveaway. Um, we've changed the giveaway, and this is I'm giving away one hour strategy in business and marketing. Uh, consult uh along with my my awesome partner rachel calderon we're gonna do i'm gonna do the foresight uh strategies come up with some strategies for your business and she's going to do um the uh marketing the marketing piece of it so this is a 600 dollar value and um but you need to sign up it's a contest so you have to go the to the lab trains this is going to be on facebook but Either way, if you could write this down, the lab, L-A-B, trains, dot, leadpages, dot, co, backslash, Dr. Nilda Perez contest. We're going to have it on all the social medias. Okay. We're going to put it everywhere because that's, that's a lot. And I realize that. But we're going to be doing the drawing on December 24th and early next year. We're going to sit. 
where the it's a Christmas gift. Um, again, this is a six hundred dollar value, and um, we're going to be spending this this hour with you. You know, trying to build your business. That's what we want. We want more Latinas that are going to build and. So we, we look forward to that. All right, until next week, guys. And uh, it was great being Thank here. Thank you. None of you can just hang on so I can say goodbye to you. Okay. Me. And we're, we're off. Thank you so much. <laughs>